matching your gift. This is Community Radio, and it works because we all work together. Radio IQ and its donors equal success for our entire listening area. Be part of something important. Pledge your financial support today online at RadioIQ.org. And thank you so much for your support. Support for Radio IQ comes from Commonwealth Senior Living. Now providing an online assessment tool to help families find the right care for their loved ones. Information at CommonwealthSL.com. And the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra, presenting Holiday Pops, December 3rd at the Salem Civic Center. Tickets at the Member 1 RSO box office or RSO.com. And your generous contributions. Radio IQ is broadcasting in digital on WVTF Roanoke, WRIQ Charles City Richmond, WURV Richmond, WVTU Charlottesville, WVTW Charlottesville, WVTR Marion, WISC FM Wise, WQIQ Spotsylvania, WIQR Lexington, WEHC Emory, WLUR Lexington, and in Richmond on 92.5 and Fredericksburg on 94.9. Radio IQ, a service of Virginia Tech. Cities across the globe have gotten used to lockdowns. Residents in Delhi are back inside, not for COVID. This time, it's pollution. You know, the sunlight doesn't hit your skin, so you feel a little, uh, you know, strange through the day because it, it almost feels like a blur has passed you by. Also today, right now, Brazil has one of the higher COVID vaccination rates in the world. One possible reason? This. A beloved cartoon character in the shape of a droplet. It's been easing fears of vaccines in Brazil for a generation. And in Ghana, a problem facing many, finding a functioning toilet. There soon may be a solution. My idea was about the development of a mobile app or tea toilet. Open the app, locate a toilet. I'm Marco Werman. Those stories and more today here on The World. I'm Stuart McIntosh with the BBC News. Hello. Two men convicted of the murder in 1965 of the American civil rights leader Malcolm X are to have their convictions quashed. The Manhattan District Attorney said Muhammad Aziz and Khalil Islam didn't get the justice. everyone to stand for a moment of silence or personal prayer and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance.
Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to our meeting for November the 17th, 2021. Regular meetings are held on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month at 3 p.m. Public hearings are held at 7 p.m. on the fourth Tuesday of each month and deviations from the schedule will be announced. The meetings are broadcast live on RVTV Channel 3 and will be rebroadcast on, on Friday at 7 p.m. and on Sunday at 10 a.m until 5 p.m. It's a long meeting. Board of Supervisors meetings can also be viewed online through Roanoke County's website at www.roanokecountyva.gov. Our meetings are closed captioned, so it's important, important for everyone to speak directly into the microphones at the podium. Individuals who require assistance or special arran arrangements to participate in or attend a Board of Supervisors meeting should contact our clerk to the board at 540-772-2005 at least 48 hours in advance. I would ask at this time if you would silence your cell phones or turn them off. Item A of our agenda is our opening ceremonies. M Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Here. Mrs. Hooker? Here. Mr. Norworth? Here. Mr. Radford? Here. Mr. Peters? Here. Item B is a request to postpone, add to, or change the order of our agenda. Um, do I have any requests from our fellow board members? Yes, no, sir. Mr. Uh, Mahoney. Mr. Chairman, I would request that the board consent to amend item N under our agenda, which is the closed meeting section, where under 2.23711A1, we're going to discuss prospective cabinets to the candidates to the Board of Equalization. I would request that we add to that closed session to also discuss candidates and appointments to the Western Virginia Regional Jail Authority, the Broadband Authority, uh, Audit, South Peak Authority, and the Resource Authority. And the Audit Committee? Audit you, committee. You, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I have no objections. Is there any objections? Is that for today? Yeah. Yes. To add to our closed session today. today. Okay. So do we have any of that information ahead of time? It's an email. It was in an email that was sent earlier. Okay. All right. Just got yeah. You're talking about adding everything in the email. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything was in the email, just okay. adding it to today's closed session. Is there any objection? No. No objection. Okay. No. Mr. O'Donnell? No changes, sir. Mr. Lubeck? No changes, sir. Thank you. Item C is new business. Item C1 is a resolution adopting a legislative priorities for 2022 session of the General Assembly and petitioning the General Assembly to favorably consider the priorities addressed herein. Peter Lubeck, our County Attorney, welcome. Thank you and good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I would like to invite our legislative liaison, Delvin James and Sue Rowland, to, to join me. Each year, the, the board adopts a resolution that sets forth their legislative priorities for the upcoming session of the General Assembly. And at your request, I have prepared a, a resolution that was included in today's board packet that does set forth five key priorities, which if the board adopts today, will be shared with our local representatives for their favorable consideration. Um, before proceeding forward, I again would like to welcome our, our legislative liaisons, Eldon James and Sue Rowland. You know them well, and it is always a pleasure to have them with us. Together, we would like to do three things today. The first, I would like to turn the time over to uh, Ms. Mr. James and Ms. Rowland to uh, share an update as to the board's legislative agenda from last year and uh, results uh, of, of our actions. Uh, I will then review the prepared resolution for the 2022 general session, and, and then we'll turn the time again over to Eldon and Sue to share any additional thoughts that they may have with regards to the upcoming session. So Eldon and Sue, the time is yours. Um, could I ask a quick question of the clerk? Are we going to mess this up if we shut it? We can always open it back up. We won't mess it up, but that's what we wanted to just be sure. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. We'll, we, we'll take care of it. All right, thanks. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, 
County Attorney Lubeck. We appreciate the introduction very much. Gentlemen and uh, Supervisor Hooker, it is wonderful to be with you all in person. Um, it seems like it's been so long. Um, real quickly, real briefly, 2021 session of the General Assembly, which included some special sessions, seems like we do that more. It used to be that it was just special when we had a special session once every 10 years. Now it's special if we don't have don't a have special one. session. Uh, but with that being said, uh, the, the board went into that session with four priority items, CSA, broadband, K through 12 funding, and the recordation tax distribution. That fourth item was the exception that uh, we, we really didn't see any progress on that. But the other three, we saw very, very positive outcomes. And I'll let Sue talk about CSA. I get to uh, start with CSA and of course you all have um, for a number of years worked very closely with um, Senator Suterline and with Delegate McNamara to um, attempt to make some impacts on what authorities there are for the use of CSA funds particularly as it relates to the private um, day education services and this was the year. Um, the bill was um, uh, merged in with Senator Mason's SB 1313 and um, many of the provisions that we had been advocating for um, were accepted. Um, there has been some change to the law that allows for at least some use of CSA funds for special ed education kids who are wanting to, whose parents want to transition them back into the schools. So we got at least 12 months um, of some additional support. Um, and then of course there's the major study that um, is created in the enactment clause of Senator Mason's bill in which um, you all had a lot of impact on uh, what the words were that were included in that enactment clause. That study group is well underway. Um, initially, it was supposed to um, be finished by the end of this year. We suggested that was way too short, and um, that was also accepted. So what you're going to see before the next session is just kind of an interim report on what the topics are that the work group and the kind of data that they're looking for. Their full report will be out uh, before the 23 session. Um, so there still is a good bit of opportunity for some involvement, some impact on what that, where that study group goes. So I say, yay. Yeah, that was after years and years of pounding on a rock with a hammer. And as somebody taught me a long time ago, if you do that enough, it eventually cracks. <laughs> and I think that's what happened. Um, the, uh, on broadband, significant funding was approved. If you remember when uh, the Virginia uh, uh, Telecommunications uh, Initiative funding was originally approved, it was $2 million. Um, and it, it, it finally found its way to $50 million of state money, but then with the special session, another $700 million of federal dollars. Um, the, the goal was to, to really get universal coverage. Um, we're going to talk more about what's coming ahead. I think they're going to have to go farther, but Seven, three quarters of a billion dollars is is a far cry from crying to try to get two million a few years ago. Um, on the K-12, uh, the legislature came through. They held harmless the ADM funding and the sales tax, um, and and got uh, got all the localities through that. So that was a an important victory. Um, I think with that, unless there are questions about the 21 session, I'm going to turn it back to. Peter to talk about the resolution. Thank you. And as you know, we have set forth five proposed priorities for this year's uh, resolution. The first request is uh, pertains to the general authorities uh, granting localities authority to issue personal property tax refunds. At present, in the Code of Virginia, it is section 15.2, 25.11.1 authorizes localities by ordinance to issue refunds of surplus real property tax revenues to taxpayers who, who are assessed these real property taxes. 
it is proposed that this code section be amended or that the Code of Virginia otherwise be amended to additionally authorize localities to return surplus personal property tax re revenues to taxpayers who are assessed such. The second priority pertains to funding for uh, kindergarten through 12th grade education programs, and there are two requests under this category. The first request is that the county supports making additional state resources and funding available to localities to support school capital needs, including rehabilitation and upgrades to existing facilities, as well as the construction of new facilities. The second uh, request is that the county urges the General Assembly to provide, again, hold harmless funding for sales tax distributions and direct aid payment based on the ADMs, the average daily memberships, until the main impacts of COVID-19 on both sources of funding cease. The third priority requests uh, that the General Assembly grant authority uh, to localities to impose civil penalties instead of criminal penalties. Uh, and, and this would be broader, more expansive authority to do so. At present, the Code of Virginia, and this is under Section 15.2.1429, authorizes localities to impose criminal penalties for violations of local codes, but civil penalties are not universally authorized. They're authorized for certain things, such as violations of the zoning ordinance, but for most other county code uh, violations, it must be a criminal penalty. It is proposed that this, uh, again, section of the Code of Virginia, 15.2.1429, be amended or that the Code of Virginia otherwise be amended to allow localities the option to impose civil penalties for violations of local codes in lieu of criminal penalties or to have the option to do either or. The county further proposes that localities be granted authority to issue civil summonses for such violations, that violators be allowed to prepay such penalties in lieu of holding a trial, and that localities further be authorized to impose liens on the real property of violators who fail to pay such fines or penalties. The fourth priority pertains to mental health and public hospital needs, and again, there are two requests under this priority. Under the first, the, uh, the county supports legislation that would relieve law enforcement of maintaining custody of individuals that are subject to temporary detention orders while such individuals are receiving medical evaluation or treatment. At present, our, our law enforcement officers are routinely re um, uh, required to wait for hours and sometimes days with individuals that are waiting to be transported to receive treatment under a TDO uh, while the individual is in the emergency room. And it's just a, uh, poor, a very poor use of police resources. And even more important than that, it is uh, inhumane and just very unfortunate for the person that needs the treatment to be waiting in, in that facility. So we are requesting uh, relief from that. Uh, the second priority is that the county urges the General Assembly to use available funds to address the needs of Virginia's state mental health hospitals, including Catawba Hospital. There are just many issues that need to be addressed in that area. The fifth and final priority pertains to the Children's Services Act. As uh, Sue has just shared, we, we did have some, some significant victories last year, um, but we did include two requests in this year's uh, set of priorities. The first is that the county supports the provision of additional state assistance to localities with contracting for CSA services to improve localities' ability to negotiate with providers of these services, such as private day placements. And this could be assistance with contracting and setting fixed rates that, that would apply throughout the Commonwealth and not um, be more burdensome to some localities than to others. The second request is that the county supports additional state resources in addition to local administration of CSA programs. At present, localities do pay a disproportionately higher percentage of co such costs. And I have distributed uh, to, to each of you a, a few of these pass along cards, and I would like to, to recognize the, uh, the efforts of Christine McGowan with my office and Alex Jones um, with the, the Planning and Development Office who have very expertly put this card together. It was proposed by some of our local delegates that a fold be included to crease it and put it in their pockets, and they made that happen, and I'm thrilled with it. So um, again, we have plenty of these cards if you wish to distribute them as you uh, speak with your colleagues. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions with regards to the stated priorities 
If there are none, I will turn the time over to Mr. James and Ms. Rowland again. Okay. Question for Mr. Lubeck. Mr. Yes, sir. When you go down Friday to the Hotel Roanoke, you might want to take a handful of those. There's 40 people down there that might want to get a copy. I've got a bag full of them. I know you do. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Here, let me reach into my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Did what? you fold that the wrong way, Ellen? <laughs> I, think, I don't think there is a wrong way. It's yeah, even, there's know. a nice, the <laughs> crease is such that he goes this way. Yeah, That's great. Um, the new session, the session 2022, with a new governor and new leadership in the uh, House of Delegates, uh, there's going to be a great deal of energy spent on how to utilize the state budget surplus uh, that, that's uh, probably as significant as, as pretty much any of us have ever seen. As a matter of fact, uh, House Appropriations uh, was meeting yesterday in the staff briefing. The staff director said more than once these are bigger numbers than she had ever seen in her uh, tenure. Um, but with that, the, the energy is going to be spent on what tax changes, what tax relief, as well as the funding of key initiatives. Um, and, you know, you heard in the campaign K through 12 funding. So uh, we're expecting to see quite a bit of uh, discussion of proposals. And that includes whether to uh, put money into state money into capital improvements on the school side. That commission reports out next Wednesday. And uh, in the appropriations meeting yesterday, the staff reminded the members of the committee that there will be recommendations, and it probably does include money recommendations, and so to be prepared for that. There were, the presentation did not include any dollar amounts because that would have been premature by about a week, but um, expect to see that. Um, I think you'll also, um, we are expecting, and of course you say what we expect the governor to do when the governor presents their budget, the, um, that can be a real pitfall to make a prediction, but everything we're hearing is that the ADM uh, hold harmless money will be included, um, so we'll be surprised if it's not. Uh, at this point, they're not planning on addressing any home harmless on the sales tax because the sales tax revenue is so strong at this point. They don't think that they will need to do that, um, and we heard that yesterday. So for your, your issues on the first side of the... Uh, of the, the foldable card. Um, the, the K through 12, the really the key dollar issues we think will be, uh, will be addressed um, in, in some manner or form uh, and, and debated through the, the, um, through the session. Uh, relative to your item number one, that has the real potential to be just part of the package of tax discussion that goes on. And it's consistent with, with some of the things that are, are being proposed, uh, giving local government a little broader authority to, to offer some tax relief. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it back to Sue on items four and five. Um, and, and just uh, to begin, I'll highlight another. We've never, ever seen this before. We're used to Medicaid needing to have some additional funds each year put in. This year, Medicaid is giving state funds back. Mm. Um, that is a function of the federal match um, that is all part of uh, COVID and, and all of what has come along with COVID. Um, the um, House Appropriations staff member uh, told those members that that's likely to continue for another two to three years. So um, again, very beneficial to the budget overall. Now, your number four item is one that is very important to a lot of people for a lot of reasons. This is where you speak to mental health and Step Virginia and the issues that have, um, that are broken, uh, particularly in your first bullet. Um, we expect that there's gonna be some kind of a proposal put forward actually from the department um, about a fix for this. Um, details are not known. Um, so I can't give you any um, little tidbits yet, but that will not be the only um, bill that's put forward. And I think we'll have the opportunity to really try to 
work that bill, um, those bills, so that you see the advantage that you would like. In terms of the funding, um, we've heard the chair of Senate Finance and Appropriations Committee say publicly a number of times this is her number one priority. Um, that's a good thing um, that she's saying those things publicly. So um, even with whatever the governor may put forward, um, we may see more um, as a result of her dedication to that. Um, on CSA, um, you know, there's not much I can say to this except to um, remind you all that some sufficient um, CSA fund, the, the rule for some sufficiency with CSA funds has not changed. Um, that is a big part of the study that's going on. There does seem to be a sort of a universal agreement among the work group members that that should stay. Your second bullet really is an important one because it, it doesn't get a lot of attention um, often. And it is, as Peter described, it's about the administrative funding for um, CSA. And you guys carry that load um, in a very heavy way. It was the last decade before any amount was increased in that. So um, we'll enjoy advocating for increased funding on uh, for your administrative costs on that. And um, Peter, uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's anything that you all want to ask us, we're available. We cover everything for you? Perfect. OK. Eldon, looking in your crystal ball. <laughs> I, I think I kind of said that's one. dangerous, but OK. <laughs> Assuming that the recounts are unsuccessful, right. um, any idea of what the composition of the House Money Committee would look like? Oh. Um, I think that wow. the way it is currently constructed, sure. uh, it, I would seem that it would change substantially. I think that's a fair statement. Um, it will it will change substantially. Uh, the the chair is uh, you know, I think we can safely say is going to be uh, Delegate Barry Knight from Virginia Beach, um, and so you'll see a whole new set of subcommittee chairs, and uh, you'll see the majority membership shift, obviously, um, and. It, it, it's really hard to tell who's coming off, who's going on. Uh, you, you used to have a member from the Valley on appropriations. When the assembly changed two years ago, that member uh, was one of the people that lost their seat because things had to shift. Will that member go back on? I don't know. We were pondering that earlier today. Don't know. <clears throat> it will change. Um, the second final thing, uh, I, I just want to say thank you, Sue, and to follow up your comment, Delvin, we've been pounding on that rock from 2013, 2012, but I forget when you yeah. came on board. I forget too. And it took a long time, but yeah. a long time. thank you for everything you've done. But Thanks. That, that, the CSA issue is, it's unfortunate, I think, 90 95% of citizens in the Commonwealth have no idea what that does, yeah. how critical that is. And, and I give a lot of credit to, to Mr. North. Uh, I know he's worked hard on it. Um, and, and this has just been an initiative that uh, is really critical and uh, it's important. And thank you for everything you've done. I think it's safe to say that Supervisor North brought a bigger hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question as we're going to look into your crystal ball. <laughs> Um, something that has been uh, pressing on us here in the county uh, is the capital needs. Do you have a feeling of where that may go as far as money for capital? I mean, I know in years past, Senator Stanley has proposed bills that would then, that would, that would be a funding source for capital projects. Do we have any idea where that may be going? Um, I think the only thing that, that I feel comfortable predicting at this point is next Wednesday we're going to see something put on the table by that commission. Um, I, I think there will be a recommendation. I do not have an idea of how big. The, the state has, has dabbled in it off and on a few times over the last 20 years. 
uh, and and uh, they one of the other proposals that was was floated yesterday in appropriations was fully funding the uh, literary fund for the first time, which <clears throat> would and look at restructuring so that the interest rates could be even better than than what they are now. So the capital it's not just an appropriation of dollars, it's also an appropriation of dollars to, to reinvigorate that revolving loan uh, program. So I, I think there's several things that well, could come. I'll say one of my concerns is there, there's also been discussion that the uh, there may be a collective effort for the state to collect the money rather than the localities and then they would divvy it out however they want to do it. Well, that scares me from, from our standpoint because We've done well. I mean, as far as our what we you know our buildings and what the plan that we have in place. Right. You now we do have our CTE monster project sitting out there that's uh, making us all sweat on how we're going to make that happen. But that, that's the only the other concern that I'd heard floating around that there may be a way the state was going to do something from their side, you know, and then kind of divvy it up. And I thought, well, we'd probably be losing. We, we'd mm -hmm. probably be the losing end on that one if it happened. Mr. Chair. I haven't heard that as a, a serious proposal. Now, you no, know, the, the, anything can happen. Right. Um, you, you know, any, any member of the General Assembly can introduce a bill, and once they introduce the bill and it goes into the arms of the General Assembly, anything can happen to that right. bill. Um, so um, we, that is not something that local governments generally would would support, and all we got to do is look back to the telecommunications tax deal, which followed that model, and it was a loser for local government. Local governments predicted it was going to be a loser for local governments. The state pushed back, the assembly pushed back, they did it their way with some compromise to local government, and it has played out as VACO and VML predicted. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been a loser for local government. And which is not to say that, <clears throat> that um, you are. Um, you will not be called upon to do similar lobbying again this year. I think. Um, right. Um, I think Supervisor North may have some information. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I'll just go ahead and share this now because you, you folks might not be at the end of the meeting. I don't know what your schedule is, and if you are, I'll just skip it. But uh, I spoke. I mean, this was a great Vaco session. <clears throat> I've never seen so many people enjoying getting back together in person. And uh, there was four uh, ladies and gentlemen from the Virginia General Assembly there. Uh, and on the subject of <coughs> capital funding for education, <coughs> I went to a session with Supervisor Hooker where Senator Favola was speaking to this subject. <coughs> a gentleman from Northampton County, a supervisor, requested if she would sponsor a bill to allow 1% sales tax uh, consideration by statewide and she said she would as long as it was a referendum uh, put on the ballot and that's something that we might have been looking for and so at VACO would, would anyone step out and sponsor a universal bill so that each county doesn't have to say may I have the privilege that the other eight have and so forth uh, it was mentioned that Pennsylvania County lost uh, the referendum by 23 28 votes something like that uh, Senator Hanger uh, I asked him what, what if the recommendation comes out next December 1st, which it is, and it's going to be a large figure, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Senator Favola said it was $25 billion in needs. Senator Hanger uh, said that one thing that might be considered is a 1% statewide sales tax that generates $1.4 billion earmarked exclusively for education, capital education needs but that it would be tied in far as distribution to the composite index, which probably wouldn't benefit Roanoke County as well, uh, but could help others. Delegate Watts, most outspoken, the Isla White bill died in committee last year. She reaffirmed her position that she does not support uh, the county by county requests that have occurred in the past. She indicates that that doesn't benefit some counties that aren't close to uh, interstate traffic and interstate highways uh, insofar as collecting a, enough money to really make a, a big dent. She advocates that this is a state issue as we've heard in the past. She says that uh, no local sales tax by counties is preferred and that she would like to see a 
sum of money dedicated to this uh, category uh, from the surplus. And while she didn't come out and say a specific number, uh, that's something that she was thinking about. We spoke to Senator Tommy Norman briefly uh, in a one-on-one, -on -one, and he indicated that his uh, daughter teaches, and she's always saying to him to, to, him to lobby for helping schools. And what I specifically said that Tommy Norman was something I wanted to try in a different approach. <coughs> Roanoke County wants to build a high school equivalent size facility. It's about $84 million, not counting land. Can you give us some help from the standpoint of an economic workforce development education right. uh, approach? And he wrote a note on there saying he was going to be in Roanoke Friday uh, this week, and be. which they are, uh, the Finance Committee's meeting here in Roanoke. And uh, I think Peter's going to that session on Friday because we're going to be tied up. So four different people, uh, four different uh, uh, thoughts. The state could borrow the money at low rates. I was talking to Jim Regenbaugh at dinner the other night, and uh, he said they could borrow money at low rates and then fund grants to the counties with uh, no interest penalty. That's a thought. Right. The, uh, <laughs> so there's a lot of dialogue going on. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a, a lot of people of at Bank of, besides me, that was talking to all these folks there's a great about the dialogue. same denominator, and that is funding for capital yeah. for schools. Mr. Chairman, what you heard um, just now from Supervisor North is um, a really good presentation of all the various perspectives on how this should be funded. Um, the one thing I'll, I'll add um, uh, or point out to you all, the idea um, that Jim was talking about, Jim Regenbaugh, with, you know, decreasing the percentage of the interest rate, right now that is set in code. And um, it, there's a number that's in code. I fully expect that we're going to see a bill that will simply eliminate that number. Um, it's one of the reasons that many jurisdictions across the state, because they've been able to get better rates through the um, private market, um, which, you know, if we want to get anything done, it's only those jurisdictions who have the wherewithal to be able to do that, you know, that are able to benefit from that. So you, you are going to see this, this rub of should the localities be given authority to raise money or should we as a state step up and, you know, do our job is the way the people that um, support a state um, pool talk about it. Um, so that it's fair, you know, across the board. How do we deal with the issues of if CPI is used, you know, that disadvantage, does that disadvantage, how much does that disadvantage? That'll be the kind of thing that, that we'll have to, you know, I hope that what we're going to see out of this study report is that this is a complicated problem. That's why it's still a problem. It is. And there is not going to be a simple solution. So we need to have as many elements to fix the problem as we can get hold of. And, so, and, and I'll just add to that, this is going to be a challenging year of transition with number one, a long-term session for the CWA. Correct. It's a long-term session time, a new administration, Correct. new ideas, new, new everything. Correct. In fact, they're accepting applications. So Senator Sudeline sent out an email and I looked at that. I said, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> here's something that Jim did share. Okay, we're, we're, we're looking at a $3.3 billion uh, surplus next year at the end of June 22. Yeah. And yeah. we're not even uh, quite at the half, halfway mark right. for this year. If you eliminate the 2.5% food for home consumption tax, it would reduce revenues by 650 to $750 million. A year. If you double the standard deduction uh, from to currently 4,500 single, 9,000 married, uh, it would reduce general fund revenue 650 million. So you got those two big uh, negatives, right. but you got a 3.23 million dollar surplus. So maybe this is the year to do those things too. Right. So th the mood in Richmond is going to be to reduce taxes, not necessarily to increase them. Right. And so you're going to get some dynamic discussion on this education subject. And Absolutely. Roanoke County at one time was thinking about doing something along those lines, but. It's dead on arrival this year, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to take a deeper dive. I think funding it with some surplus monies right now is the right approach and let the dialogue continue to come to some consensus uh, as to what's the best <coughs> funding formula going forward 
for the education of capital because nothing's been done since the 1950s. Right. And I firmly believe that you've got to think outside the box mm -hmm. and you've got to put the spin on workforce development and economic development in front of the education piece because it all is one big package. It's not just an education high school, it's a driver of three different things as I mentioned. And I think that's one way to sell this for us to try to get help on the CTE school. We hear you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. So go, go to work and get some money for us. <laughs> <laughs> any Thank other you very questions much. or any other comments? <clears throat> Seeing none, then I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we adopt the legislative uh, resolution under item C1. All right, no, second. Second. Second, Mr. Hooker. Madam Clark, if you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Thank you very much. Item C2 is a resolution requesting the Commonwealth Transportation Board fund the Route 460 and alternate Route 220 intersection improvement projects in the Hollins and Vinton Magisterial Districts. I'd like to welcome Megan Cronice, our Transportation Planning Administrator. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Roanoke County support is desired in the form of a resolution to request that the Commonwealth Transportation Board fund the Route 460 and alternate Route 220 intersection improvements project at the December CTB meeting. The CTB is considering allocating a portion of fiscal year 2021 revenues collected above estimates to smart scale round four projects. It is anticipated that the BDOT Salem district will receive $27.8 million. We're just speaking about surpluses. This is some of them coming our way. Dr. Raymond Smoot, the Salem District CTB member, would like to fund projects of regional significance with the Salem District funding. He has identified the Route 460 and alternate Route 220 intersection improvements as one such project and requested that the Roanoke Valley Transportation Planning Organization restore service transportation block grant funding awarded to the project in June of 2020. The RBTPO took action on November 4, 2021 to allocate $2,544,860 in SCBG funding to the project leaving the balance to be funded as $19,252,124. The Route 460 and alternate Route 220 intersection improvements project was originally identified in the U.S. 460 Arterial Preservation Program study initiated in 2017. The intersection was also included in the subsequent Route 460 Operational Improvement Study, which included substantial public feedback in November 2019 and June 2020. The resulting displaced left turn configuration included in your packet will relieve traffic congestion and improve safety at this important regional connection between the Roanoke Valley, Botetourt County, the Lynchburg area, and Interstate 81. While the project received SDBG leverage funding in June 2020, Smart Scale Round 4 funding was not awarded in 2021. Prior to learning about this CTB's funding opportunity, funding opportunity Roanoke County staff submitted an SDBG application for this project to request $5 million to use for Smart Scale Round 5 leverage. You acted on this a few months ago. Both SmartScale and SCBG funding are 100% funding sources that do not require a local match. There is no fiscal impact to the county for a $22 million project. Staff recommends adopting the resolution supporting project funding. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Radford and I are members of the TPO, and I just want to say publicly for the record that we thank those members of the TPO that uh, unanimously, I might add, uh, even though some folks in the area weren't, weren't in attendance, they would have supported us had they been there, of uh, the match that we're asking for to help uh, the Commonwealth Transportation Board bring this project to uh, full support and approval. So uh, thanks to all those folks out there and other municipalities and counties that supported this. And uh, I think this is a great, uh, a great thing because this was the one that we didn't get this last go around in, 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 in number four, and uh, very expensive. We needed a lot more money. I think it was 13 or 14 million dollars to match the total cost to have been approved in smart scale. So this way, uh, the region only has put up a 2.2, I believe it was. 2.5 million. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Appreciate that resolution going to uh, Commonwealth Transportation mm -hmm. Board. As well as they the meet on December 8th, so exactly. More oh, that's good, that that's meeting. very timely, mm -hmm. and also to our local uh, delegates and so forth, so they can see that. Thank you, Mr. Any Chair. other comments? All right, then I will open the floor for a motion, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion we adopt item C2. All right, and since it's in our joint district, I'll make the second. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Thank you. Item D is a request for public hearings in the first reading of rezoning ordinance uh, consent agenda. Approval of this, these items do not indicate support for or judge the merits of the requested zoning action, but satisfies procedural requirements and schedules the public hearing, which will be held after recommendation for, by the Planning Commission. Item D1 is a, a petition of Lawson Companies to amend existing property conditions on approximately 12.15 acres on property zoned RC3 medium density multifamily residential district with conditions to construct 216 apartments located in the 5,000 block of Cove Road, the 2,700 block of Peters Creek Road, and the south of Beacon Ridge subdivision. This is in the Catawba Magisterial District. Is there a motion to approve the first reading and schedule second reading for December the 14th, 2021? Motion. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Norworth? Yes. Mr. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Item E is our first reading of ordinances. Item E1 is an ordinance amending Chapter 18, Section 18-63.1 of the Rhino County Code, discontinuing Rhino County's receipt of applications and fees for the issuance of permits for septic tanks, on-site sewage disposal systems, and wells. I would like to welcome our Director of Development Services, Tarek Munir. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, member of the board. You have before your recommendations to amend the uh, sections uh, that as mentioned by uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, let me outline what we've done so far. Uh, Dr. Thensia Morrow, the Director of Allegheny Health District, uh, has requested that Roanoke County discontinue receiving applications and fees for permits for wells, septic tanks, and on-site sewage disposal systems, which pursuant to the Virginia Administrative Code should be directly, directly received by the Virginia Department of Health. This will require an amendment to the Section 18.18-63.1 uh, 18 of the Roanoke County Code. In late 1980s, specifically August 19, 1988, in an effort to simplify the process of builders or for the builders and for residents to obtain necessary construction permits, the Board of Supervisors of Roanoke County, after consultations with the Virginia Department of Health, amended the Roanoke County Code, Chapter 18, to state that county staff would receive applications and fees for permits for private wells, septic tanks, and on-site sewage disposal system on behalf of the Virginia Department of Health. Over the years, Virginia Department of Health's fees schedule and process has increased in <coughs> complexity. And the Virginia Administrative Code now states that all requests for the sewage disposal construction permit shall be directed initially to the district or local health department. Dr. Stencia Morrow, health director, the health director for the Roanoke City and Allegheny Health District on October 20th, 2021, requested by the letter attached to the county administrator that the county code be amended to be consistent with the Virginia Administrative Code so that the county no longer receive permit applications and fees on behalf of the Virginia Department of Health. Accordingly, it is proposed that Chapter 18, Section 63.1, that the Roanoke County Code be amended so that the county no longer receive the applications. Um, the impact on, on the fiscal impact of, of amending this policy is, is very uh, simple. 
However, it's important to mention that the county averaged approximately 130 total permits for septic and well permits collectively every year and collect about $4,400 that annually for septic permits. In addition, the county uh, collects about 3% uh, technology fees on all the other fees that transfer to Department of Health. The technology fees collected are mostly a wash since we pay uh, the credit card fees. Uh, so the questions are what are the benefits to the builders and, and applicants versus the, the, the drawback? The benefits for builders or the applicants will be $50 discount that normally we, we keep, and also the 3% technology fees that I mentioned. The drawback is that all applicants must submit their application directly to the Department of Health. Uh, no impact on our, on our process at all. Our process will continue to be the same. Uh, so the recommendations of the staff is the recommendations uh, is asking the board supervisor to approve the first reading of the ordinance and schedule the second reading and public hearing for December 14th. We are looking at probably January 1st to be the, uh, the effective date for this uh, ordinance to take effect. Uh, I hope I outlined all the information that you need and I'll be glad to address any questions you might have. Is there any questions for Tar? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Tark, I'm, I'm glad that we're finally doing this. Uh, uh, to me, it was a little bit of uh, more government red tape that wasn't needed. And you said it was a discouragement to builders, but we like to go uh, to the source. And it was always so a source to get that permit. And so it's, to me, it's way overdue. We should have been out of that a long time ago. Uh, I buy those permits directly from Bedford County, Bonatai County, Franklin County. It's very seamless. Uh, so I'm just, I'm all for it. I'm glad we're finally getting out of it. Uh, not, uh, not just you, Mr. Radford. Uh, it's me and all the staff yeah. on the second floor. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we, have, uh, we have lived it. I have lived yeah. it for the last 15 years. Yeah. And we're glad that this is coming to a head. Yeah, we don't need to babysit the health department. Absolutely not. Yeah. Good answer. It sounds like you're ready to make a motion on that. Yes, I certainly will, Mr. Chair. I'll make the motion uh, to approve the first reading and schedule the public hearing and second reading for December 14th, 2021. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Norworth? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Thank you. Item E2 is an ordinance accepting funds in the amount of $118,089.97 from the Commonwealth of Virginia and appropriating such funds to the Roanoke County's grant fund or distribution to the town of Vinton, uh, excuse me, for the distribution to the town of Vinton for the purpose of providing municipal utility assistance and authorizing the execution of one, a memorandum of understanding and two, certification of receipt for the use of such funds. I'd like to welcome our Director of Finance and Management Services, Lori Gearhart. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. The Town of Benton has received notification that they have been awarded $118,089.97 from the Commonwealth of Virginia for a Municipal Utility Assistance Program as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic through the American Rescue Plan Act state and local fiscal recovery fund. The program requires the County of Roanoke to act as the town's fiscal agent and accept the monies on their behalf. This requires the county to sign a certificate of receipt for the payment. In addition, the county and the town are required to sign a memorandum of understanding to facilitate the assistance to eligible customers. The town has this item on their December 7th agenda for approval. Staff recommends approval of the first reading and scheduling the second reading for December 14th. Are there any questions? I will entertain a motion. I move the approval of item E2. Okay. Second. All right, so that's setting the uh, first reading and uh, 
approving first reading and scheduling second reading for December 14th. Madam Clerk, do you call the roll? Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Knorr? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, one question. Uh, Lori, what happens if all the funds aren't expended to, I guess, eligible customers? I mean, do you have to pay it back to the federal government or? Um, yes, we would have to do a reimbursement. We actually did one of these through the CARES Act um, with the town of Vinton, and they were able to spend all of the uh, monies. And this one is actually a little bit easier um, to facilitate for the customers. So um, I've talked with Ann Cottrell, who's the director of finance with the town of Vinton, and she doesn't seem to think that there'll be any issues with us um, being able to expend no. all the funds. So, never, but yes, we would be required to send any back if we do no. not spend it. I've never seen a time where government couldn't find a way to spend the money. <laughs> Just saying. Thank no, you. No comment, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Item E3 is an ordinance accepting funds in the amount of $50,000 from the Friends of the Blue Ridge and appropriating the funds to Roanoke County's general fund to be used for constructing a playground at Explore Park. We're welcoming our Director of General Services and Parks and Recreation and Tourism, Doug Blunt. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. In 2016, the Runner County Board of Supervisors approved the Adventure Plan for Explorer Park, which outlined the direction for the park's development. As a part of the Adventure Plan and Business Plan for Explorer Park, it outlined the necessary public-private partnerships needed for the park to be able to develop into a destination facility. One of the new amenities identified in the Adventure Plan was providing an inclusive and destination playground. The Friends of the Blue Ridge is a nonprofit organization. Their mission is to help preserve, promote, and enhance the outstanding natural beauty, ecological vitality, and cultural distinctiveness of the Blue Ridge region for future generations. The Friends would like to donate $50,000 for the purpose of constructing an inclusive and destination playground at Explorer Park. The playground is proposed to be constructed next to the pavilion at Explorer Park in Adventure Village. This playground will have a woodland theme and will have features that all children can play on. The total cost for the equipment, installation, mulch, and border rail is $95,000. The donation will secure the purchase of the equipment. The Friends of the Blue Ridge is currently fundraising for additional money to donate to the project as well as another potential local uh, nonprofit organization is in discussions with Roanoke County about participating in the project. Should additional donation funding become available, then staff will come back to the Board of Supervisors for consideration of accepting additional donations. Any funding that is needed in addition for the project that is not raised through donations uh, will be funded from the Parks, Recreation, and Tourism's fee class account. Staff recommends approval of the first reading of the ordinance and setting second reading for December 14th. I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions for Doug? Yes, sir. Just a comment, Doug. I'm, I'm so glad to see that we're going to get a, a playground. I, I like seeing the drawings and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and the location where you had that, uh, I assume there's got to be clearing for trees and everything. And you've got that built into that 65? Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. It, okay. it will be for this year if when you uh, uh, come for Illuminites, mm -hmm. it will be just to the left of the Illuminites right. entrance this year. Okay. And uh, it has minimal clearing. Uh, okay. That will be necessary, and as a part of this project budget, we will have a small retaining wall to support the okay. edge, and there'll be fencing that'll be a part of the fence. So Great. every um, of of the project to where when you come into the park, you'll clearly be able to see it, and there'll cool. be plenty of parking uh, there in Brew Tavern's parking lot for yeah. people to be able to enjoy it. Great, Great. We're so thankful for uh, Friends of the Blue Ridge yes. doing that. Yeah. Absolutely, a great partner to have. Senior, yes, sir. Doug, will there be some signage plaque? whatever to at least denote some recognition of the friends no that's a great question there will be as a part of the signage that we put up um, with all of our playgrounds that um, uh, provide the rules we will do some type of uh, very um, um, appropriate signage uh, thanking uh, friends of the blue ridge and any other potential donors uh, for their contribution to the playground very good well i'm happy to make a motion to approve um, item E3 for the first reading and schedule a second reading for December the 14th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. second. Right. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Norworth? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Item F is a second reading of ordinances. Item F1 
is an ordinance accepting grant funds in the amount of $23,207 from the Library of Virginia and appropriating the funds to Roanoke County's grant fund. I would like to recognize our acting director of library services, Tony Cox. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. We have an uh, ordinance here to accept and appropriate grant funds in the amount of 23000 from the Library of Virginia. These funds were received from the American Rescue Plan Act and will be used to cover the cost of 66 hotspots for one year. Roanoke County residents who visit any of our six library locations are able to check out a hotspot. Um, these help fulfill the library's mission to promote knowledge by impartially providing free and open access to information. There have been no changes since the first reading of this ordinance on November 3rd, 2021, and staff recommends approval. Okay. Any questions? No questions, but I'd love to make a comment. Absolutely. I'm just incredibly appreciative of all this, and I know that it's helped uh, people in all districts, but I've heard a lot from my district, and it has been really instrumental for some for some residents, they'll go out and they'll get their own hot spot, but it doesn't seem to work quite as well. Have you heard that? Too? Yes. And I'm not I'm not sure what the magic is with the library hot spot, but they're doing really well. They're very popular. <laughs> they are, I know, and I appreciate your efforts and all the work that it takes to make those available. With that being said, I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Noy has a Mr. question. First, I have a question, uh, a curiosity question. So we got a lot of hot spots. And so, which library is using them the most? Well, they're all checked out. So. They're all checked. <laughs> they're out. They're well, all that's checked great. Out. That's yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I was just curious if there was certain areas that had. Well, some the larger libraries domain. have more. What's that? The larger libraries do have more of those. I can get that information to you if you like. No, I don't need that. <laughs> if you're saying they're all checked out, that suffice. Thank you. So, Sorry. motion motion to approve um, F1. All right. And I'll second the motion. Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Noor? Yes. Mr. Bradford? And they're probably all checked out at Catawba and Bent Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're yes. everywhere. Mr. Peters? Yes. Item G is a public hearing and second reading of ordinances. Item G1 is the petition of New Millennium Building Systems, LLC, to rezone approximately two acres from an R1C low density residential district with conditions to an I1, excuse me, an I2 high intensity industrial district located at 3878 Garmin Road. This is in the Catawba Magisterial District. Our Director of Planning, Philip Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Debbie doesn't want the slideshow to come up. Um, go to plan B. <laughs> it was working earlier before the meeting. Well, those consultants that come here about your legislative agenda. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's I important, want. too. Uh, I mean, you some new money for some here, equipment. Here. Um, so we'll bypass that. Um, the request you have before you is, uh, as was mentioned, is to rezone two acres uh, to, from residential to industrial. Hey, she got it going. Um, okay, it's working on here, not there. Um, so uh, this is located at Garmin Road. Um, the property sits um, south of railroad tracks from the Kroger Distribution Center, uh, sits um, or south of the tracks from that. Uh, it abuts the Roanoke River. On the other side of the river is Green Hill Park. So it kind of gives you uh, an idea of where that's located. Um, this pri property was zoned back in 1986. Um, it was zoned at that time, I think, from M2 to A1 agricultural uh, for the purpose of putting uh, a double wide uh, manufactured home on the property. The C, the condition, the best that we can make out is that originally the request was to rezone the full 48 acres. Um, and the board at that time decided that since the site was located as an industrial prospect to reduce that to two acres. And we think that's what the C is, is that it amended the property to just be the um, two acres. Anyway, um, it is surrounded uh, on most of the sides by uh, industrial zoning. South, uh, obviously, Grand Hill Park is zoned R1. Um, as far as... Uh, 
future land use. It is uh, all principal industrial and in the proposed two acres of the 48 acre site is uh, principal industrial. Um, so again, I should mention that the two acres is part of a larger tract of 48 acres owned by New Millennium and they're just trying to clean up the property. They want to rezone this property and then remove uh, the residential structures and the um, and, and the accessory dwellings that are on the property. Uh, the Planning Commission did hold a public hearing on this request um, on November 1st. There were no citizens to speak on this request. Um, the Planning Commission did discuss several issues, including the zoning history of the property, the surrounding uses, and zoning of the property, uh, the principal industrial future land use designation, uh, we talked about the amount of land zoned industrial in the county, and this property is located in the floodplain, so they did discuss the floodplain regulations as well. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of the rezoning request uh, from R1C, the density residential district with conditions to I2, high intensity industrial district. Staff recommends approval as well. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Mr. Thompson? I'll just ask one real um, quick question, Mr. Thompson, and that mm -hmm. has to do with the current um, residential situation. I'm wondering if that condition was based on that house and they just wanted it to be in alignment with what was existing instead of what the long-term use really was and all the surrounding areas already industrial, that they just carved out a little caveat for that. Yeah, I don't know how they did the C. The C <laughs> we couldn't find a actual proper condition. And again, the um, if you go back and we look at the, I think the C exists because the original request was for the entire property, right? And so it was for the full 48 acres back in 1986. And I think since they shrunk it, they said that was the condition was to reduce it in size. So gotcha. I will mention that uh, bed crew from Balzer and Associates is here. If you have any questions, um, representing the applicant as well. So Are there any other questions for Mr. Thompson or the applicant? Okay. Then I will now open the public hearing. I have no one signed up to speak, Madam Clerk. No, sir. I okay. Have no, no. Then I will now close the public hearing. Are there any further questions from the board? Don't want to give an opportunity, Mr. Crew, so he can justify his fee. <laughs> he can stand up and speak. <laughs> I figure he'll justify it some other way. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no comments. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ms. Hooker, you have a motion yes, to sir. adopt. I'm ready for a ready for a motion. I feel that the proposed rezoning request is consistent with the. Uh, purpose and intent of the county's adopted comprehensive plan and good zoning practice and will not result in the substantial detriment to the community. I therefore move that we approve the rezoning request as it has been requested. All right. I will second the request. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Are there, uh, excuse me, item H is appointments. Are there any appointments that need to be given to the clerk? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I may have one. I'm going to ask the clerk for clarification. Yes, sir. Did, did you get my notification on the Hollins District Library Board appointment for Dale Brown? I, I have that information, but I thought you wanted me to put it on the 14th. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Just, I just want to make sure you had it. And thank Got you. It. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Hearing no others. Um, item I is our consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered by the board to be routine. It will be enacted by one resolution in the form of forms listed below. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Are there any uh, items anyone on the board would like to remove? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to adopt our uh, consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. second. Yep. All right. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Item J is citizens' comments and communications. I have one, and it's for Mr. Robert Campbell. Mr. Robert Campbell. Okay. And I do not have anyone else. Madam Clerk? No, sir. Okay. I have no one else. Then we'll move on to item K is our reports. Is there a motion to receive and file the following reports? Mr. Chairman, I move that we receive and file 
the eight reports that are listed in our agenda. Thank you, sir. Do you have a second? Second. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Bradford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. And item L is our reports and inquiries of board members. Today I will be begin with the gentleman from Windsor Hills, Mr. Rapper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It gives me great pleasure to wish my father happy birthday today. He turns 89 right. and he acts like and feels like he's 79. But he's a, a Roanoke County resident, still very active. Uh, he plays golf occasionally with Mr. North. <coughs> and I understand he beats Mr. North. Instead, well, I wasn't going to mention that. I, I'll let Mr. North comment on that. But uh, we, uh, we usually celebrate something on his birthday, which is today. He's an active church member, goes to choir. So we've already done our birthday party with him uh, for lunch today. But uh, Dad, if you're watching, happy birthday. Uh, would like to also... Uh, let you know, uh, I attended uh, November 4th, the Roanoke County Plan 200 up uh, at Bent Mountain. That seemed to be well attended by uh, Bent Mountain community people, probably one of the, the more active ones that I, I have been to of the three. Uh, but it just constant, those, those folks up there really are interested in, in what's going on. While I was there, uh, uh, I got a tour of the Bent Mountain Community Center. Uh, we had a lot of roof problems with that. I got to uh, uh, Doug see, uh, see some of our, our work uh, up there in, on, I didn't go on the roof, but saw the results of it and some of the upgrades they have done that we have supplied in the county uh, in that facility. It looks like they're about ready to turn the corner and start making that uh, more active community center as we get more and more cleared away from from COVID. I uh, want to also let you know they have a Christmas fair at the Benton <coughs> Community Center on December the 4th. It's from 4 to 8. I've, <coughs> I've been to this a couple of times. It's really great where they have different artisans there and just all kinds of Christmas fair. A lot of it will be outside this year, so dress warm if you want to attend. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Mr. Mahoney. Uh, just two items, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think many of us had the opportunity, well, I know we had the opportunity on November 8th to tour the Carillion Children's Facility at, at, at Tanglewood, and, and it's just uh, an amazing facility. It, it's beautiful, uh, what they're trying to do with uh, children and help them in terms of the health needs. It, it, it's just incredible. Um, I think they told us what, 400, 500 employees are there. Um, but it, it, it's, a, it's just a beautiful facility, and I think it's a, it'll be a gem for, for Roanoke County. Uh, second, on November 9th, I had the opportunity, uh, I was invited <laughs> to address the Hunting Hills Homeowners Association annual meeting. Uh, Chief Hall was there, and one of his officers, and uh, representatives from VDOT, and uh, the folks at Hunting Hills, uh, let us know what their concerns were, and um, I explained to them some of the issues that we're facing Roanoke County in the future, particularly uh, our, our career and technical education issue and how critical that is and, and what is involved in that process. And I think I heard a lot of good feedback from many of the citizens there that were very supportive of that initiative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Soker. I just have a, a couple of things, Mr. Chairman, that I wanted to mention, and um, Mr. North and I and um, um, Peter Lubeck and Richard Kaywood all went to VACO um, for a couple of days this week, and it was really a great experience. We learned a lot, benefited a lot from that and those conversations, and uh, I was uh, privileged to attend several of the meetings and sit on the Education Committee, and just a couple of highlights that I wanted to share with that. Um, and there were enough highlights that Mr. North and I have decided that it might be beneficial to have some kind of um, session, maybe two by twos or something to to share some of these thoughts with the rest of the board and then eventually also with school board also because there's a lot of valuable information I think that would behoove us to, to visit about. 
On the education committee there, some of the main points was um, school infrastructure and modernization and just the fact that we are not alone. We are in the same boat with every other school system in the state of Virginia with this, um, this problem with how do we fund and keep up with the needs. The standards of quality um, are always updated by the state and yet they are not given specifics on how they will be funded. So there was some discussion about that. There was ongoing discussion about staffing shortages, not just with teachers, but with instructional assistants, bus drivers. There was a, a long list of needs that they are facing. Um, and then there was also uh, plenty of discussion about holding schools harmless on their ADM. Um, on to the uh, economic development, there was a lot of vibrant discussion in that committee also. And the one that really caught my ear, and I think I shared it with all my um, fellow members there, and it was uh, a strong discussion on housing and how that Virginia is adding more people annually than we are housing. Mm -hmm. So we've got this growing deficit of people joining our state with no place to live. <laughs> so we've got to really start focusing on housing if we want to be attracting people to our area. And then last night there was a VDOT meeting uh, regarding Dagwoods Lane bridge work and I was very impressed with VDOT and the work that they did in putting that together. I so appreciate our public safety coming together with a plan on uh, for the days that that bridge will be closed that they have alternative routes for any emergencies and um, and our planning staff was there too and they were great as always so I appreciate them alleviating some of those concerns and fears thank you mr. chairman thank you mr. North yeah thank you mr. chair uh, I too attended uh, Baco a lot of transportation discussion as I'm vice chair of the transportation committee uh, <coughs> two people spoke there one I'll, I'll tell you about in a minute on broadband from NACO and also talking about the infrastructure bill but the other gentleman Russ Dudley of VDOT spoke about the revenue sharing program and uh, formula uh, based funds, PTF funds, priority transportation funds in particular. Just to let you know, we're in the Salem district. We got the fourth largest <laughs> chunk of money, if you will. Thank you very much. $27.8 million, or 9.2% of the total pot. We were fourth next to uh, Richmond, and then Hampton Roads was number two, and Northern Virginia, of course was number one as they uh, they got the biggest chunk of the money 62.8 million 58.9 for hampton and uh 42.7 for richmond and i might also add that the richmond district is now part of the central virginia transportation authority which includes our neighbors up the road in lynchburg so when it comes to smart scale applications those three jurisdictions they have a lot more money to put on the table to leverage a project so we don't have that taxing authority, nor am I advocating for it. I'm just going to say that we do pretty good in the grand scheme of things with respect to those priority transportation funds, in large part because of the strong representation we now have on the Commonwealth Transportation Board with uh, Dr. Ray Smoot. So, and that $27.8 million, some of that I believe is what we just heard about a little bit ago concerning 46220 interchange. Uh, with respect to uh, the first part of the transportation meeting in Richmond and also uh, the NACO Transportation Steering Committee, uh, there are three areas that uh, uh, that is interesting. First of all, the bill has now been signed by the President but has no rules of engagement finalized yet. So here we go again. Congress has got all this money and it's coming, but don't, don't go stand on the corner waiting for it because it won't be here for a while. Uh, the second is the Surface Transportation Board grants are now slated to be $72 billion over five years, which is good, which means some of that money will find its way into the Roanoke Valley Transportation Planning Organization. Uh, a fourth band of 50,000 to 200,000 population allegations are being calculated as well. These will be calculated with formulas with some funds to the states and some coming straight to local access. So. There could be some funds coming locally as well as through the TPO and the state. Uh, this one, I'm so glad uh, that uh, Mr. Hunter is here because I have news for you. Uh, $65 billion uh, will go to the states, uh, but some middle mile competitive grants for $1 billion over five years will be available. Uh, now, <clears throat> this is one for us to 
stand up and participate in. NACO spokesman Mark Ritaco encourages staff to participate with input and in drafting the guidelines. Virginia is slated to receive initially a minimum of $100,000, uh, $100 million. Uh, didn't sound like a lot, but it's better than nothing to start out with. However, the Department of Commerce is thin in terms of staff to write these guidelines on broadband for this, for this pot of $65 million of money. And he encouraged us, if we had people that wanted to participate or he provide input in the process of drafting guidelines for these funds, that uh, to get in contact with him and I have his contact information upstairs. Lastly, a Senate Bill 3011 and a House Resolution, I believe it is 5375, is an option. Another bill, another piece of legislation at the federal level that will allow 30% of ARPA funds to be used for local transportation. This has 75 co-sponsors with broad bipartisan support in Congress. It also includes up to $10 million in revenue loss allocation. So should that bill pass, it could have some impact on counties around the country, perhaps in Roanoke County. Highway bridges will get $284 billion nationwide. Water infrastructure, $55 billion, might, might help out with some of our water issues here in the region. I think you know what I'm talking about. And cybersecurity, $50 billion, which is, might also come our way to help in Roanoke County and around the, the nation. So uh, that's all I have since I already spoke about uh, the uh, political landscape on the education council. Paul's getting right. worried about your 10 minute limit, so we're good. I'm well, I kidding. used yours, Mr. Chair. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> All right, well, I do want to um, remind everyone, I'm not sure of the times, but I do know that the last two plan 200s are today at the South County Library. Oh, okay. at four? Hope you're there, because it started 20 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> One Thursday, and then tomorrow at the Green Ridge Rec Center. Mm -hmm. um, I too want to add um, to what Mr. Mahoney was saying about Korean children's. Um, I also was able to attend attend the uh, a tour of the building, and you know, I think it's amazing. They said it brought 17 clinics into one place, and what that does for healthcare for those kids is is amazing. Um, and so I think I'm looking forward to everything that they're going to be doing there for for all of our folks um, in this part of the, in this whole part of the um, of the of the state um, I would ask that we begin looking at a joint meeting with the school board sometime after January and that will be to hopefully give us an update on the CTE that I understand the committee will be <coughs> ready to make a um, presentation by that point so I would like to see if we can go ahead and get a time on the books uh, for a joint meeting with the school board. Um, I, I want to thank Amy and Greg's not here, but everyone who participated in the state of the county. Um, it's been a great year in our county. I, I know the best is yet to come, but I want to thank everyone who had a part in it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of great things that are happening. I want to thank Mr. Radford who uh, took care of the long meeting back the first of the month. Um, <laughs> I'm glad he was able to take care of that for us. I do four, appreciate him stepping in. <laughs> the four, like, 14 minutes? My wife reminded me that it was a 14 minute record. Then oh, she okay. said, she asked me today as I walked out the door, is this one going to be 14 minutes? I said, no. <laughs> so, um, and since I didn't get to do it at the first meeting, I do want to thank the citizens of, uh, of, of the Benton Magisterial District for allowing me to serve for another four years. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was actually, again, I was gone during the election, but even though I was running unopposed, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. But, uh, <laughs> um, and then lastly, um, as being um, open and honest with my citizens and everyone that I represent, um, while I was gone at our last meeting, I was in Baltimore. Um, since I began my cancer journey four years ago, I made a pledge that I would keep people up to date, and if it ever got to the point I was unable to serve, I would step down because I don't want anything that's going on with me to affect uh, the citizens or the, the uh, where Roanoke County is going. But I, I would like to give an update that uh, things have changed a little bit with me. They have now diagnosed me with persistent thyroid cancer that is treatment resistant. 
Um, I will be going back to Baltimore in January for some follow-up. And um, and um, possibly moving to um, uh, Sloan Kettering up in New York, but <clears throat> while it's been a journey, um, the last four years. <clears throat> have gone, have actually gone very well. Um, we're, we're just going into an area that I'm not sure what the, um, uh, you know, the next steps will be. But I, I'm appreciative of, of this board, um, their support, um, uh, the citizen support. I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Uh, again, I wanted to be honest with everyone because some people already knew a little bit about what's going on, but. I feel like it's better coming straight from the horse's mouth. And um, I wanted everybody to know where things stood, but um, I'm very confident in my team of doctors at, at Johns Hopkins. Um, they, they've done an amazing job thus far, and I have complete faith in, in what they're doing and what they, the, the track that he, they have me on. He, um, my doctor you know, continually tells me to be optimistic. We have a lot of tools in the toolbox but it's a it's yeah. a journey yeah so um with that we will move on to our <clears throat> excuse me our work sessions item m item m one one is a work session to present the economic development strategic plan to the board of supervisors by jill loop and m2 is a work session to review with the Board of Supervisors allocation of fiscal year 2020 and 2021 year end and the American Rescue Plan Act with Ms. Lori Gearhart. And then we are going to move into, then I'll, I guess I'll make a motion to, that we'll move into closed session pursuant to the Code of Virginia Section 2.2-3711.A.1, discussion of pers prospective candidates for appointment to the Roanoke County Board of Equalization also to the Audit Committee, the Roanoke Valley Broadband Authority, the Roanoke Valley Resource Authority, South Peak Community Development Authority, and the Western Virginia Regional Jail Authority. Do I have a second for that? Second. Second. All right. Now we will now move into our recess to the third floor for our work session. Wait a minute. Sorry. Would you please Mr. call the roll on that, please? Certainly, sir. <laughs> Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Noor? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. And now we will recess to the third floor for our work sessions and closed sessions. <laughs>